Okay, welcome today to Best Science Brain YouTube. Today we are discussing, uh, we are treating uh, chemistry, alternative B, YA 2023 examination. Today we will be looking at quantitative analysis or titration. So on the board already we have the table for recording titration results. We have the breath readings in C and Q, the rough, one, two, final reading, initial reading, and then full of acid use. So we have to start the experiment and then record the readings and then go back to some calculations. So the question we have now is on the white paper there, solution E contains 0.744 gram hydrochloric acid per 250 cn3. F is a solution containing 1.60 gram of SOH, that's the base, per 500 cn cube. We are told to put E into the burette and titrate with 20 slash 25 cn cube portions of F using material range indicator. Repeat the experiment to obtain consistent readings, tablet readings, and calculate the average from acid use. Okay, before we go to the calculations, we're going to run the experiment. So as you can see, we have the experimental set of the burette, and then this is solution E, that the acid HCl, solution F, that the base SOH, with air seeding from us. Then we're going to pour the acid into the burette. The acid is E. We empty the acid into the burette, and as normally do, as when we add a little amount of the acid, we check whether the burette is leaking. If it's not leaking, we continue to add more acid into the burette. So, we have passed the zero level, remove the funnel, and then adjust the acid to start from zero. Okay, we can see the bottom of the meniscus resting at zero. So we are starting from zero. Our initial reading for the rough will be 0 0.00 CNQ. Okay, having done that, go back to the bullet and then start our experiment. This is the base. Already prepared, that is F, prepared into the conical flask. Then all we have to do is to add two drops of indicator. Material range. Two drops into the base. Then we swap the flask. We have a yellow color. We now start titrating. Somebody should get me a few type of a white paper here. I have that right there, or white one. Just give me one. Okay. All right. So this is the white one serves as our white tie. So we titrate while watching for the color change. It's getting lighter. In there is more golden now. Okay, we we'll have an orange color here. So, when you titrate, stop by orange color. Please, the first orange color you see, stop. You don't, some people titrate and go to pink. If it's pink, you have a see the end point. When it's pink or red, you now have excess acid. So, the value we read the reading. We take reading on the bullet. The reading here is around 24.7.8 for the bottom 24.8 cn cube. That becomes the final reading of the rock 24.80. So we now subtract we have 24.80 as a one of acid use. 
having done that, we go back to the burette and then fill the burette more with more of E. So this is E, that's it. Add the two of amount of acid, check whether the bread is leaking, it's not. We'll add more. So, remove the funnel and adjust the level of the acid. You may decide to start from one whole number. Must not be from zero again. So, I'm going to one. I'm there. So this is one whole number. So we we'll write initial here as 1.00. As an estimate, you add 24.8 to 1. If you add 24.8 to 1, you're going to have 25.80. That is why you expect the next color change. So all you have to do is you can just run it until you reach 25. That is taking the next whole number to the uh, nearest zero digit 25 then when you reach 25 you can take it easy drop by drop it will change definitely between 25 and 26 so take the bullet the this is our our base already prepared then we we'll take our indicator two drops of the indicator material range we can now run it with speed since we are more careful in the first experiment on to reach 25 we allow the bread to flow This is 25, we'll stop, then share the plus, bring it back, and then go drop by drop. All right, we have the color orange. See the color? That's all comparable. This is pure orange. So we now have 25.50. So 25.50, what we have here? When we subtract, we have 24.50. So having done that, we see top the acid again. Where is our E? Top the acid. Maybe once we start from zero, it left for you. Once we start from one, once we start from two, start from three. You choose any whole number. Probably less than 10 as your initial. So we we'll move down. So I want to start from 5, whole number. 5, I write my initial as 5.00. So having 5.00 here, if this should be correct, M point, the next color change now between 4.5 plus 5, give me around 29. So I'm going to run the R seed until I reach 29. I will take it drop by drop. So we prepare the base again from the B color bed F. So we have to adjust it until the bottom of the meniscus, okay? See it's on the ring. It's going down gradually. It's alright. It's on top of the ring. The bottom of the meniscus on top of the ring. 
then put on the conical flask, remove your hand, and allow it to run down. After that, just when you have drained the whole alkali, just touch the bottom of the conical flour with the tip of the pipette and we don't blow the extra drop. Or the extra drop may be an additional drop of the base because the pipette is calibrated to deliver exactly the 5 cm cube. So remove it, then add indicator to the base. two drops. Then we are going to titrate. We can move it to 29 as we said before and then take it slowly. Then you have to nine and draw by drop. This is orange. You can see the colors are the same. So we have 29.50. So record the final reading here 29.50. Subtract 24.50. All reads on the table must be to two decimal places. We we'll now find the average one of our acid use. That is E, not A this time around. That becomes 24.50. Use the consistent values, ignore the rough over 2 in CN cube. We still have the same 24.50 CN cube. So we'll go to the calculations. The first question says, from the information, result, and information provided, calculate the concentration of, the, of E in mole per dn cube. E is the acid. We'll go to the first, para, uh, first sentence and see whether there's a clue to this uh, solution. We are told in the first sentence that solution E contains 0.744 gram of HCl in 4 cn cube. So know the mass of HCl in, sorry, in 250 cn cube. Know the mass of HCl in 250 cn cube. We are going to convert this mass to the constant gram per dn cube. So on the board, we have, from the information we have on the question, we have 0 0.744 gram in 250 cn cube. So we want to find the mass in a 1,000 cn cube. A 1,000 cn cube represents 1 dn cube. 1,000 cn cube will now contain by proportion, 1,000 cn cube times 0 0.744 gram all over 250 cm cube. So cn cube cancels cn cube. When we solve this, what are we going to get? 2.9 what? 9.8 to 3 significant figures. Gram per dn cube. Why gram per gram? Per, because it's the mass present in 1 dn cube. And 1 dn cube is equal to 1,000 cn cube. So this is the concentration in gram per dn cube, which can write as rho E, where E stands for the acid. They were looking for the, we are looking for CE. We we'll find the molecular mass of HCl first. The molecular mass of the acid is 1 plus 35.5, giving us 36.5. Having done that, we we'll now go to calculate our CE. Concentration in mole per dn cube given as concentration in gram per dn cube, which is rho e, all of our molecular mass. And the concentration in gram per dn cube is a 2.98 for my calculation over there, all over 36.5, which is the molecular mass. So what the final answer, please? 
0.0816 mole per dn cube. So these are concentration in mole per dn cube to answer, answer to question 1a. So the next question says we should find the concentration of F. F is the base in mole per dn cube. Of the base in mole per dn cube. Okay. Going to the board, we're looking for C, F, the S for the base. But already we know our C, E. From the previous calculation of God, C, E, is still on the board as 0 0.0816. 0 0.0816 more per dn cube. Then our V, E, is the average type that we obtain from the table as 24.50 cn cube. Our VF is the volume of the base, and the base was pipetted using what? A pipette of what volume? 25 cn cube. We now have 25.00 cn cube. Then we now have NE standing for the number of moles of RC in the balance equation. The equation is still HCl plus SOH, you know, HCl plus water. So the RC number of moles is 1 here. We we'll have one mole of the acid. NF stands for the number of moles of the base, also one mole of the base. Having listed this, we're only looking for one item. We'll go use the general formula. Now, we we'll use CEVE in place of the normal CAVA. All over CFVF equal to NE over NF. We'll cross multiply and make CF the solid formula. Doing that, we're going to have C equal to C E V E N F all over V F times N E. Making our substitution correctly, the value of our C E is 0 0.0816. V E that the average title is 24.50. N F is one more of the base all over V F one of the base prepared 25. And then N E is N E is one. So please solve this. What? Zero point zero eight. This is zero point zero eight zero. Yeah. Zero point zero eight zero more per dn cube. This is the base concentration. So we are now on question one C that says find the relative molecular mass of S O H. And we cannot get the molecular mass of SOH by adding the atomic mass of SO and H because S is unknown. So we're going to go to the board and use the formula to find the atomic mass of S, the molecular mass of, of SOH. We are now looking for the molecular mass. We apply this formula, considering more per dnq, that is C, equal to considering gram per dnq, that is rho over molecular mass. We make molecular, molecular mass the subject of the formula. We now have molecular mass equal to concern gram per dn cube all over that in mole per dn cube. So we we'll go to the question. So we'll go to the question. The second sentence says, so the second sentence says, F is a solution containing 1.60 gram of SOH per dn cube. So we want to find the concentration of, of F in gram per dn, meaning the mass of F present in one dn cube or 1,000 cn cube. So from the question, we see that I have 1.6 gram of SOH in Faraday cn cube. So we're going to find the mass that should be present in 1,000 cn cube. That becomes our PF, or the concentration of F in gram per dn cube. So, so we'll first find PF. So, from the information we have in the equation, we are told that we have a Faraday cn cube of solution contains 1.6 gram of SOH. And this stands for the mass in one dn cube. So you now say 1,000 cn cube of solution will now contain 1,000 times 1.6 all over 500. The value rho f will now be 3.20 gram per dn cube. So that is the concept of the base in gram per dn cube. We'll go back to this formula. 
that says molecular mass equal to also in gram per dnq all over molar concentration that becomes 3.2 and the molar concentration of, of the base is on the board 0.08 divided by 0.08 when we divide we're going to get what value 40.0 so this is the rate of molecular mass of the base molecular mass has no have no has no unit but if you are out to find the molar mass would have been 40.0 gram per mole. The two values are equal. Molar mass has a unit, but we are out to find the molecular mass, which has no unit, 40.0. And that suggests the compound is likely to be sodium hydroxide. So now we're going to question D. That says we should find the relative atomic mass of S. Now question number D. The relative atomic mass of S. So to find the atomic mass of S, this is a compound, the base. We equate it to the molar mass, which is 40, and calculate S. S plus 16, that is the atomic mass of oxygen, plus 1, that is hydro, uh, for hydrogen, equal to 40. So S plus 17, that give us, gives us 40. S becomes 40 minus 17, that gives us 23. But 23.0 to 3 significant figures. Remember that relative atomic mass, likewise, relative molecular mass, the two of them have no units, no unit on this. So this is likely to be sodium. We'll go to the fifth question there, E. We have to find or calculate the percentage by mass of S in SOH. The percentage by mass of S in SOH. Come to the board. The percentage of S in the compound given by mass of S all over the rate of molecular mass of the compound times 100 over 1. The molecular mass of the compound have been estimated today. We got it as what value? 40.0. And we also got the atomic mass of S as what? 23.0. And there's only one atom of S in the compound. So the mass of S remains 23. If there were to be two atoms, it would have been 23 times 2. So now I have 23 mass of S, molecular mass 40 times 100 over 1. Solving this, what's the answer, please? 27.5%. So this is the percentage of S in SOH. So please remain to uh, uh, remain uh, focused on, let's go to the, to the next question, because you know that uh, chemistry examination, these situations, questions can be what? Can be twisted. So next question, we're going to look at the same specimen, we're going to look at how to calculate percentage impurity and percentage purity. So we have another question on the same specimen here that say that E is solution of 0. 0815 mole per dn cube per cl. F is solution of impure sodium hydroxide impure containing two grams of the impure base per hydroxide cn cube. Put A to the bread and titrate. We have done this experiment before. We have done titration. I've got the endpoint at 24.50 at the accurate endpoint. Now, let's go through the calculation. We are asked in A, calculate the concept of pure sodium hydroxide in mole per dn cube. Calculate the concept of pure sodium hydroxide in mole per dn cube. You look at the first sentence. We are giving our acid concentration as 0 0.0815 mole per dn cube. So we know our CA, or rather we know our CE, the acid concentration. We're looking for now CF, the base concentration, the pure base. So we have on the board, we're looking for the base concentration of the pure base. So I will already know CE from the equation. Then our VE is the average title, our VF is the base pipette. Then the more number of moles of, of the acid is one, the base is also one. So we use the general formula for titration, CEVE, all of our CFVF equal to NE over NF. We we'll make CA the subject. CA becomes CEVENF. 
all over VF times NE. We make accurate substitution. CE is a 0 0.0815. Our VE is 24.5. Our NF is 1. Our VF is 25. Our NE is 1. So what the final answer? Who has calculator? Do it. 0 0.08. 0 0.0 what? Eight. On the dot? A0. Okay, more per DNQ. So these are base concentration. You see that the answer tally with the first one we did. To so say that uh, the solution is homogenized is a standard solution. So we'll go to the question number B that says we should find the concentration of pure NaOH in gram per DNQ. The concentration of pure NaOH in gram per DNQ. So go to the board and work it out. So to calculate the concentration of the base in gram per DNQ, also known as pure sodium hydride in gram per DNQ, we use conch in mo per DNQ, equal to conch in gram per DNQ rho all over molecular mass. So we make this one the subject. See, the one, is the one we're looking for. So rho becomes C times molecular mass by chrome applying. We now find the molecular mass of sodium hydroxide. Sodium is 23, the atomic mass of sodium is 23 in bracket. Also is 16, and hydrogen is 1. Add it, we have 40. Then to get rho or the conch in gram per we now have C. This C stands for CF, that's the base. 0 0.080 times 40. What the value? We we'll apply this, what we're going to have? We're going to have 3.20 gram per DNQ. So this is the concept of the base, because the base is F, of the pure base. The pure base in gram per DNQ, please. The conk of the pure base in gram is 3.20 gram per DNQ. So look at num uh, question C. We are to find the mass of impurity in the base. Mass of impurity in the base. Before we go on to solve the mass of the base, we ask ourselves, we go to the question and look for, is there any clue that will help us to solve it? We look at the, the second sentence that says, F is a solution of impure sodium hydroxide containing two grams of the impure base in 500 cn cube. F is a solution of N impure NOH containing that. So that, you see that the two grams you have there represent the mass of the base and the impurity. In Paris CNQ, but we cannot call these two grams the concentration gram per DNQ. Why won't you call it the concentration gram per DNQ? Because the concentration gram per DNQ represents the mass in one DNQ. So we're going to first of all find the chunk of the base in gram per DNQ by converting this mass to 1000 CNQ. So you see, we look at the board, we see that, as I said in, uh, a few minutes ago, we have two grams of the impure base in Paris CNQ. We have to standardize it. Find the mass that should be in 1,000 CNQ. So in 1,000 CNQ, we're going to have 1,000 times 2 over 500. That will give us 4 grams in 1 DNQ. That is 4 grams in 1,000 CNQ. So this presents the concentration of the impure base in gram per DNQ. Mind you, different from the concept of the pure base in gram. This is the concept of sodium hydroxide in gram per DNQ. Why this is the concept of the impure base in gram per DNQ? We're not looking for the mass of the impurity in the base. We should know that mass concentration of pure base plus mass concentration of impurity will not give us mass concentration of impure base. So we are trying to find the mass of the impurity. We made this one the solid sub formula. We now have mass concentration of impurity will now become mass concentration of impure base minus mass concentration of pure base making this the subject of this formula. So solving this, the mass concept of the impure base is this 4 gram that the base and the impurity needs, then 4.0 gram per DNQ. 
the mass concern of the pure be that is assuming that draws that pure is a 3.20. We now have minus 3.20 gram per dn cube. When we subtract, we're going to get 0 0.80 gram per dn cube. So this is the mass of the impurity in the base. Now we we'll look at number D that says find the percentage impurity in the base. Percentage impurity in the base. So we'll go to the board. So to find percentage impurity, we need this formula. Mass concentration of impurity. All over mass concentration of impure base times 100 over 1. So for my previous solution on question C, the mass concentration of impurity with the mass of impurity is 0.80. When I have 0 0.80, the mass concentration of an impure base, the impure base is 4.0. I hope you know the difference between impurity and impure base. You're like when you have a bag of rice, the impurity in the bag of rice is stone or chaff. So that is the impurity. Then the impure rice is rice and stone mixed together. So times 100 over 1. What the final answer, please? What? 20%. So we we'll have this as the percentage impurity in the base. If you are asked to find percentage purity, there are two ways to do that. But you can do it this way. Once you obtain that of impurity, just do 100 minus 20. That's 100 minus the percentage impurity to give you percentage purity 80 percent okay listen carefully there's some other questions that may come up in the examination some may ask you in the, this is an example, since the base use is so much closer, some may ask you why is it not advisable to prepare a standard solution using sodium hydroxide why is it not advisable to prepare a standard solution using sodium hydroxide Sometimes we use sodium carbonate in place of sodium hydroxide. Why is it not advisable to use a prepare a solution using sodium hydroxide? Reason is because sodium hydroxide is highly liquescent, absorbs much shock that will what, decrease its what, concentration. So that is why we don't use sodium hydroxide to prepare a standard solution. Some may ask you in the examination, what is a standard solution? What is the standard solution? You can have some question coming up in uh, part of number three. Because there are three questions in chemistry practical. What is the standard solution? A standard solution is a solution whose concentration is known. A standard solution is a solution whose concentration is known. Like this acid and base we use are standard solutions because from our calculation, we got their concentration as about 0 0.08 each of them. So a solution whose concentration is known is called standard solution. If I have a liquid, and I pour a substance inside it, but I don't know the mass of substance I poured into it. That cannot be called a standard solution. Or you ask, what is the molar solution? What is the molar solution? A molar solution is a solution that contains one mole of a substance, one mole of the substance in one dn cube of water. A solution that contains one mole of the substance in one dn cube of water. So, is a molar solution a standard solution? Is molar solution standard? Yes, because we know it's considered, but it's one that contains one mole of a substance in one dn cube of water. That was called a molar solution. So, let me ask you, why do we must steam late newspaper before testing for a dry gas? If the gas is dry now, I want to test whether the gas is acidic or basic. Why do we must listen? Why do we dump it with water? It's because the presence of hydrogen ion and hydrogen ion inside water will indicate either what acidity or what alkalinity of the gas. So when the gas comes in contact with water, it reacts with water on the litmus to provide either an acid or a base that will have effect on the litmus paper. So may I see as you doing titration reaction. If I'm titrating now, turn to this place. If and perhaps I somebody pours 10 cn cube, 15 cn cube of this water into this, why pressure is going on? 
we it affect the end point of the reaction if you are titrating and somebody mistaking or you mistaking the pore do you see what are into it does it is it going to affect the end point of the reaction i want to answer no. the answer is no because this is what has the neutral p here ph of seven you will not affect the end point if the end point is up to 4.5 it still remains with 4.5 so may ask you, mention some equipment you know you can use to prepare standard solution. What equipment can you use to prepare standard solution? Um, we have what? So the question I said is, mention equipment you can use to prepare a standard solution. This, you can use the standard flask, standard volumetric flask. That's what, I'm, what we have here. Standard flask, one liter flask so is one of them. Standard flask is used, number one. You can also mention you use the weighing balance or chemical balance for weighing at the weight of the substance. If the substance is solid, if the substance is solid though, like sodium hydroxide, you say weighing balance. But if the substance is liquid, you don't say weighing balance because you don't weigh a liquid. If it's a liquid, you say, if it's a solid, let me come again, if it's a solid, Standard volumetric flask and weighing balance, stera, and then what else you needed? Beaker. These are the things you use to prepare, such as a solid like sodium hydroxide or any other solid. But if it's an acid, you use standard volumetric flask, stera, and then measuring cylinder. Measuring cylinder. You don't weigh acid, acid liquid. But if the question did not specify any substance, they say state two equipment used to prepare some solution. You can just mention any of the equipment I mentioned without uh, respect to whether it's solid or liquid. Okay? So let me ask you, what is a primary standard solution? I already defined a standard solution for you. A standard solution is a solution that, a solution that has what? Non-concentration. What is a primary standard solution? You say that is a Standard solution prepared from a pure non hygroscopic or non decreasing substance. Standard solution prepared from a pure non hygroscopic or non decreasing substance. That is what's called a primary standard solution. Which instrument used to mean the volumetric comp uh, composition of water? With instrument, I will know that water contains two volume uh, of hydrogen to two parts according to one part of oxygen. Use the Hoffman voltmeter. The what? Hoffman's voltmeter. Other questions can come your way. Um, which instrument can you use to bring to spark hydrogen and oxygen in the laboratory? That is, you want hydrogen gas to react oxygen by electric charge to spark the two of them together. You use an instrument called the eudiometer. Eudiometer is spelled E U D I O. M E T E R. Which instrument can you use to transfer solid into a, a container? Solid sample into a container. What do you call it? The spatula. The what? Spatula. You see me using it here. And so on. Many are more questions you have to know in chemistry. Why is sodium nitrate? Sodium nitrate 5. Why does it does sodium nitrate 5? Why does it not undergo hydrolysis in water? Sodium nitrate, is it a common in a normal salt or acid salt? It's a, norm, it's a normal salt, NaNO3. So why does it not undergo hydrolysis in water? Because it's a salt of a strong acid and a strong alkali. Salt of strong acid and strong alkali don't undergo hydrolysis in water. So we can, we're going to rewind up here. So keep on listening to Best Science Brain YouTube. Subscribe, and then you'll not regret that you subscribe. So that whenever we shoot our videos, you're going to see it without waste of time. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lord.